Great to see everybody here today. Really appreciate your coming out, and I um, uh, really appreciate all the students sticking around to be here today, because all of this work is absolutely without question about you, and uh, it's really tremendous to see you being willing to share in this moment with us. Uh, today we're announcing, after a long haul, uh, a $2.4 million worth of funding from the 21st Century Program to provide after school extended learning and summer school for about 1,400 kids, two schools in Portland and two schools in Biddeford. Without question, just a great day for a lot of low-performing, low-income kids. So right off the bat, just saying thank you for that happening to the state. And Commissioner Bowen, who sent his words, and we have some comments from him as well. So first off, tremendous news. And what we know is that when kids start falling behind early and you don't help them catch up, that starts to magnify exponentially. When kids start falling behind in second grade and third grade and fourth grade and fifth grade, you can often see that a lot of the young people that we work with here at the high school level, it all started way back when. And what this program is designed to do is to set up some real individualized curriculum within these schools to make sure that we're helping second graders catch up with their peers. Because you don't want them falling behind year after year. In the last year in the program that we have now at Reiki and East End, 92% of the kids that we worked with advanced a full year academically in this program. 92%. That's phenomenal. And over 50% of those kids actually advanced more than a year. And that's really ultimately what you want to do. You want to get them all the way, catching up and getting ahead. And this grant over five years is going to allow us to begin to do that uh, in four new schools and serve 1,400 kids. We have a few special guests here that I want to um, bring up to say a few words. First are some of the folks who are on the front lines who are going to see this impact more than anything. This is really a public-private partnership. We couldn't do this without the public schools. The public schools rely on us to do the good work that we do and apply for the funds. And so I want to bring up the two superintendents who are so instrumental in making this happen, Jeremy Ray and Manny Koch from Biddeford and Portland. Come on. Uh, first, thank you to Learning Works uh, for all of the work that you did on this grant uh, for us. This is a tremendous opportunity for our students um, with our dwindling funds coming from the local and state level. Um, opportunities like this wouldn't be here for kids without the fine work you do. Secondly, I want to uh, thank my assistant superintendent, Jeff Porter, who really was on board last year when this prog uh, project began and has really uh, been the uh, driving force behind it for the Biddeford School Department. I really appreciate the work he's done. Um, when we talk about resources and we're talking about trying to get kids to catch up, these are the types of things that keeps kids connected to their schools and connected in their community. And so we're just so thankful for you guys. Um, and we look forward to spending um, the next five years with you and hopefully longer. Thank you. I just want to echo what Jeremy said. And again, thanks to Learning Works for the work that you've done and our partnership with us, and we know we're going to continue to strengthen our partnership as we um, share these resources and bring on board Presum Scott and Ocean Avenue. And we have our principals here, are really a driving force for change in the organization. It really starts with the leadership level, uh, or leadership at the principal level, and we're uh, fortunate in Portland to have two amazing principals, Principal Lauren at Presum Scott, Principal Kersey at Ocean Avenue, and they're going to really do great work in partnership with LearningWorks. I think for us, it's really around making sure that students uh, graduate uh, from high school, college and career ready, without the need for remediation. And we understand that where students get off track is really at the elementary level, right? And that's why we have a pre-K to 16 focus. And it's really a clear, bright line benchmark for us is getting every student reading uh, proficient in reading that grade level by third grade. And that's why it's valuable to have these resources come in at second grade to make sure that students who need that additional support to really accelerate their learning and get them there have that support. Um, especially in the time we're dealing with 
uh, diminished resources. So it's wonderful to have this partnership that will allow for our students to understand that learning just doesn't end when the school day is over, that it's extended, that it's also a summer learning experience for our students. And what I've often said to um, internally to our stakeholders and externally, I say this uh, this afternoon, is that we have students who, um, through our more imperative, are below proficiency, that we really have to get them to proficiency faster. And this is part of those partnerships, this program and support that you're going to provide that would help us take our students and get them to proficient that much faster. And so for that, we're grateful, we're thankful, and this is really critical to our work. So thanks again. I'll add that when Manny first got to town and we were first um, hanging out and chatting about the schools, one of the first things he said is we got to figure out how to close the gap in the summer. You know, we got these kids and they're done in June and they don't start again until September and so much ground gets lost. We got to focus on closing that gap and that's when we really began the conversation about how to make this kind of work happen. Um, in terms of making it happen, my next uh, two guests that I want to bring up to speak, um, if, if you don't remember, last spring, the Department of Education awarded these grants and then through a bureaucratic mistake on their end, pulled them back. So we had this press conference then. We're, we're past the appeal process. There's no possibility. Can't pull it back this time, so we waited. Um, but really, there was a tremendous amount of conversation up in Augusta from our legislators and from the two individuals who are going to speak right now with the Department of Education pushing hard to make sure that they got these funds back out the door as fast as possible and that those programs that were um, legitimate and that knew how to spend the money appropriately got funded. And not only did the Department of Education get the money back out the door, they just about doubled the amount of money that they were funding last time, so many more kids are getting services. We did lose some time that kids could have got otherwise, but in the end, um, there's more money getting out the door, more kids are going to be served, and these two individuals are instrumental in making that happen. That's Mayor Alan Cassavant, who's also a legislator uh, from Biddeford, and Senate President Justin Alfond, who's the senator from the city of Portland, representing this district and Learning Works in particular. So if you two guys would come up, we'd love to have you say a few words. So uh, thank you, Ethan, and it's great to see uh, so many students here because that's what this is all about. But you can't uh, overstate uh, a couple things. One, this is a competitive grant. So Learning Works competed against many other great uh, programs. They put their heart and soul into them. And Learning Works not just got one, but got two pieces of the pie. So congratulations to Learning Works and the results you're getting, the accountability the bar that you have for all of your programs, and that can't be overstated enough. So thank you, Ethan, for providing great leadership. Um, this this public-private partnership, it's been talked about a little bit, but we have to get more creative. Clearly, we are not putting out the dollars we'd like uh, from the state side, and so we have to get more creative, and programs that work with our public schools, work as nonprofits, coming together, solving problems, that's what makes our communities great and make our community strong. And uh, again, uh, it's what makes these students thrive and hopefully smile a little bit. Come on, smile a little bit, guys. I mean, this, you know, you must be getting some sort of credit for being here. But no, I, I, I just, uh, it's really uh, very, very important that it's always, it's student-centered. Whatever we're doing has to be student-centered because at the end of the day, you all are gonna be taking care of us. You know, and, and that's, and, 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 and you know, I need, I need to take care of me, so. Um, 1,400 students, that's, that's a lot of students. But what does that really mean? I mean, Ethan spoke about it uh, quite a bit. This extended learning time is so crucial. After school, summer, doing it in not the same traditional ways that they do in school, it's, 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 it's dynamic. It's really, really important. And, the, and, the, and what we're doing is closing that gap and giving all students a better opportunity when they're in school traditionally. And so I am thrilled um, for this day. It's taken a lot of uh, emails, a lot of phone calls, a lot of tough conversations with the Department of Education, but that's all behind us. What's uh, uh, in front of us is a great opportunity for 1,400 students and their families. So thank you, Ethan, for giving me the opportunity to speak today. You, know, you notice how politically savvy I am. I always defer to the senator. 
you know. <laughs> of course, he doesn't mention that, you know, we talked about support. Well, of course, I'm always up in Augusta supporting him. Uh, but um, <laughs> on, a, on a serious note, uh, I, I really appreciate what Justin has done. I don't think you really, uh, many people realize what an advocate he's been for education while well, he's on the Education Committee now as Senate President. I mean, his voice is always loud and clear in terms of education, and he was a huge asset to this program. And I want to thank Ethan and his staff for being so persistent. Um, this is deja vu all over again, as Yogi said, because I was here uh, just a number of months ago, months ago celebrating the uh, award, and of course, as, as was indicated, there was a bureaucra bureaucratic uh, follow-up. But I got, got to admit, you know, Commissioner Bowen um, was very receptive. He understood. He listened to what I had to say. He listened to what, what, what uh, the senator said, and he was there, and, and the, the goods got delivered. And I can tell you something, you know, I'm, I'm Mayor of Biddeford currently. I served as a teacher for 35 years and uh, social studies, and I was well aware of how critical it was for kids in the younger years to get some sort of foundational support, whether it was in the home or in the schools, it had to take place. And those who didn't get it, by the time that I got them, there was something missing. There was a gap, and a lot of it translated to self-esteem. And part of my job happened to be rebuilding self-esteem and trying to get them to believe in themselves and believe in their skills. And programs like this are so important to reconnect kids with the thrill of education, of learning. So I want to thank you for all you've done. I want to thank the state of Maine for what it's done. And I'm really thrilled that you've expanded a bit of it because I know that our kids will be willing and able to, to meet the task. Thank you very much. Um, you know, it's, it, it is remarkable, the folks we have here and the kind of work that they do up in Augusta in terms of making sure that education is put at the forefront. And I appreciate everybody's kind words about Learning Works. I want to pass that on to, uh, is Amy? There's Amy. Amy, who runs this program, who doesn't like to stand in front of crowds. And, but she really is the rock and the foundation that makes this program work. But she was also the rock and foundation of these applications. And um, yes, we did get funded. And we also, we were the two best, we were the two top scoring applications in the state. And that really was thanks to uh, Amy, because she really knew how to put this together. And she understands what moves kids from a place of instability to a place of stability. So thank you, Amy. Um, Senate, the Senate Majority Leader is also here. I want to say thank you for coming. Seth Goodall from Sagadahawk County has uh, been gracious enough to come down and join us. So thank you for being here. I appreciate it. Um, we have a, a couple of reporters here, and I don't know if you want to ask a few questions. Jeannie Wynott Vickers oversees all our educational programs. So Jeannie, would you mind coming up if there are any specific questions about the programming itself? She's happy to answer them, or any of the other folks here. How much do you got awarded last year specifically, and what's the difference? Uh, the difference was about 2.2 million over the five years, about 2.4 million. So it's going to allow us I think in the spring we probably would have been able to serve 1,200 or so. Now we're going to be able to serve about 1,400 over the five years. That's both in Portland and Biddeford across the board. So combined. combined, yep. Yep. Um, the two schools in Biddeford, it's about uh, 150 kids a year. The two schools in Portland, it's about 130 kids a year. When we covered this the first time, there were dollar figures associated with each school. Do you have that information? Uh, yep, uh, 300,000 annually for Biddeford and uh, 257,000. Not that I count every penny. 257,000 for uh, Portland uh, for the two schools. And so it's a five year grant, but in the final, in the years four and five, they reduce the amount of the original award. So it goes down to 75%, then down to 65%. Um, no, the ones in Portland that we currently have, Reiki and East End, will remain there under a different grant, but the same program. These will be brand new programs in two new schools, Presumpscott and Ocean. The principals are here too, and they can answer any questions. Perhaps um, Jeannie can talk about the component of that. Is these new programs? You had mentioned moving um, like the alphabet as well. I mean, so there's a couple of things now going on moving our works. 
towards the middle region, talking yeah. about expanding water lines, sort of geographical footprint as well. Yeah, we, we've done quite a bit in Biddeford, actually. We um, started down there. We have some case managers who are working with at-risk young adults. We have um, anger management classes that we provide, and we also have a new high school that we're starting down there, just like YBA up here. It'll be called YBB, Youth Build Biddeford, and that'll be starting up um, sometime late winter. Two weeks. <laughs> That's what Nick always says when he's working on a construction say, project. Just two more weeks. <laughs> Yeah, no, three is. months later, it's still All two, of weeks. Start in two weeks. Starting two weeks. Yeah. So yeah, we'll be, we'll be starting the high school. That's with Biddeford Housing Authority and the coalition there. All right. Well, thank you everybody for coming. And uh, if you have any additional questions for any of these folks, please feel free to do it. Really appreciate your being here today. Thanks very much for the support.